welcome to the Momentum Multiply Titans show where we bring you all the updates about your favorite team. We've been up to a lot in this past month and here's the lineup for this month's episode. We visit the Laudium Cricket Club in Pretoria. We chat to rising star Elise Murray Marks. And finally, we caught up with the first team. Laudium Cricket Club is an association in the Laudium suburb that provides the sport of cricket to community members at both junior and senior levels. The club currently has four junior teams and three senior teams in the open age group. You know, previously, Laudium used to be a community where it was cricket based. You know, nowadays the community is running out of cricket. They're losing interest from cricket, but uh, more concentrating on the soccer part. But as a hub, as a hub, we offer a lot of a, a lot to the kids, where we de develop them to be better cricket players. Like hence, we're having our Suman Bamjis who are having scholarships at Tags recently, and they are so there. There is ample of a list where we produce players who made it for us for the varsity bazaaris from the club. First of all, I'm going to start off with my senior 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 team. My senior team is playing the Titans uh, Premier League. Uh, where I have my under-15s are playing in the Platinum Titans League. I have my under-13s who's playing in the Platinum Titans League. My under-11s playing in the Platinum Titans League. And my under-9s who are playing in the Gold League. In the previous years, uh, we have Diaval Pires, who's now the in thing in a T20 game. We started playing his cricket club level-wise from under-9 at Rudyam. We have your Rivaldo Munsami, who's playing for the Northern Heat as a professional level. Uh, in the previous years, we had players like Alvira Peterson. We had your Imr Imran Tahir actually playing in Lodium Cricket Club. The club is earnest about grassroots cricket development and would like to create a new sporting legacy in their community of Lodium. I started playing at under nine. So I, be, I played my whole, my whole career or so far for Lodium. It, it's been good. I think uh, fortunately I had the opportunities that a lot of other guys wished for or hoped they had. So I think there is that that glimpse and hope for Lodium Cricket Club to be a bigger club and for it to expand a bit more. It was it was really good uh, when I came. I was a fast bowler and in between my coach had like sessions with me and then he told me that uh, I would I would go for the bowling spin and it actually benefited me when I bowl spin. I have learned a lot of things, especially uh, the dedication and the, uh, how to push yourself and a lot of things like teamwork and how a team works as like a family basically. And uh, I have learned a lot, especially uh, when you have patience, you would get whatever you want. It's really good. I would. I actually take my club as like a family and it's from 2016 I've been playing in this club and I've been enjoying playing for this club and I, and I would be like to, I would like to go further with this club. Okay, uh, in 2018 when I got here, Simeon Bajbi was still 13 years old, you know, but he was still in the system which he, he played under 19, under 13 provincial cricket by that year. So I took it about myself seeing that there's potential behind this boy and knowing the background of his family. You know, I I encourage him to work hard, looking at the talent he has, you know, that maybe cricket might give you something later on in life. You know, you might be someone in life later on with cricket. So we've come a very long way, me and Suleiman. I nearly lost even my arm throwing balls to that boy. It's not even funny, you know. So yeah, but you know, he, he's done well over the years. Hence he made uh, the Coke side, Northern Coke side for two years. And now he's uh, making the cold side. I think it's a good achievement for him and for the club also, because he's, he's, he's raised, he's born and raised in Lodium, you know, and again, making the cold side again, it's, it's a very big achievement for him. Plus the Bazari now, you know, it's something else. Not everyone gets a chance to get a Bazari at tax, you know, exposing the sporting bazaar, which you know, school fees, you're going to school for free and you, you, you get facilities, HPC, you get top notch facilities to train at. I think it's a big, it's a big achievement for him. So along the years playing your under 13 regional weeks, under 15, under 17, 
still recently playing uh, Coke and Cups with. So it's great experience, great exposure, and it's good to play guys that are, are, are usually at a club level. The quality isn't as great as, as a provincial or a national level. I think it's always great to represent Northerns and represent Titans for any provincial or regional week. So I think uh, those opportunities are, like I said, guys wish and, and it's everything for them. Like it was everything for me. So just to play in those tournaments is really special. The rising star and teenage sensation, Deerveld Brevis, who plays for the Momentum Multiply Titans, hails from this very club, the Laudium Cricket Club, and his achievements have inspired a lot of young players in the community. You find kids, you know, going around asking questions on how did he go about things, you know, for him to be able to get to that level he's at, you know. But what I tell him, it's all about hard work. Hard work, it all comes to it. Then one day you'll reach for the stars. Oh, it's actually a Bravest who, who was actually in this club and then he went further beyond to play for the Titans and I would and I would love to play for Titans. Yes, uh, I like to play for Titans. Uh, I had a dream from when I was small. I used to watch Brian Lara as my inspiration and the knock he had with uh, uh, England with that 400 I would, and then that inspired me to play cricket. I think if you're looking at the past, it was probably A.B. De Villiers. I think uh, one of the great sporting legends of cricket he is someone that I really look up to and at the moment would probably be Dayan Khalim. Uh, really, I met him at the bash when we played the Titans bash. I think uh, just spending that four or five games with him really inspired me and just to meet him and know the ty type of person he is off camera. So it's one thing to see a person on camera but when you actually speak to them and get to know them, I think they really inspired, he really inspired me. The wish of Laudium Cricket Club is to create more potential players and one day produce a Proteus player that they can boast from their area and plowing back into the cricket community of Laudium. I'm Elis Marie Marks. Um, I'm 20 years old and I'm a bowling all-rounder. Elise Marie Marks is a 20-year-old cricketer born in Pretoria. She was only eight years old when she started playing and ever since then, she's loved every moment of it. She took us through her cricket journey and experience of playing for the Titans ladies team, the Fidelity Titans. I was born in Pretoria, never moved since. Um, I have an older brother, uh, he's about 20, 21. Um, he basically started playing cricket before I found love, I've played different other sports and we played in the backyard like any other story, any other girl would tell, um, we played sports and whatever and just pick up the ball and he's like okay let's just throw me some catches because he's a wicket keeper and um, I don't know, instant fell in love with it. My parents were so supportive, um, having my brother as well as a supporting system within the game itself um, helped quite a bit. Um, my parents was always next to the field, never thought, well, a lady couldn't do this. So they were supportive from the day one that I took up the sport and just loved it since then. I was fortunate enough to be in a primary school where there were girls cricket. Um, I was in large school where scroll, where there is still up until today there's a girls and team. Fortunately enough in my high school as well there's girls cricket. So I did play with the boys, which was a little bit more just competition and stuff for me to just develop my game. Um, but I did play in the girls' teams as well, just to, to keep motivating them to continue with the sport. So I was fortunate enough in both my primary and high school career that there was girls' cricket. Because I was playing for the boys, um, a lot of guys would say I'm, I'm keeping, or actually more the parents would say that I'm keeping their son out of the team and stuff like that. Like, there's a lot of negativity going around that why is there a girl in the boys team like how does she deserve it and my primary school was so like they were strict um, we went according to a point system and they were saying to the guys and to myself that I have to I have to be in the top um, with the with the points and stuff to just make it fair and I was always in the top with the points because the points works like fielding batting obviously on your skills um, and then I was always on the top of the, 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 the log basically with the points. So they never really had a, had a way to not keep me in the, in the team because of that. Um, so that's probably one of the negativity sides to, to what happened. Um, 
positive um, outcome in that would be um, going to Namibia was my first ever on an on, on the 13 week. Um, traveling for long hours with a bus. It was exhausting, but it, we, we had a lot of fun. Um, going over there, it's my first time traveling out of South Africa. Um, so yeah, that was pretty cool. She was 13 years old when she joined the then Northern's Provincial Women's Side and has been with them for 10 years now. And she's played with and learned from older, experienced players. I joined the Titans at age nine. Um, for the under 13 groups, regional groups. Um, I trialled, stayed in the system at under, nine, under 13 level for about two or three years. Then I moved up to the under 19 level and then got kicked back down to the under 16 because I was too young. Um, so I was a bit fast, fast forwarded in my career with that. But then I came back, played one year under 16 for Titans. And then back then it was still called Northern's Cricket Union. Um, and then under 19 I played since I was 14 and then 2021 was my last year of under 19 level. Elizabeth has been part of the Titan setup since she was 12, 13 years old and then she got the nickname of Clanky because she was obviously really young. Um, she's grown up through the ranks here. Uh, she is a bowling all-rounder within our team, opening bowler. Uh, she calls herself a bit quick, balls a quick ball, um, one of the quickest in the country at the moment I'd say in ladies cricket and when she bats she plays as a finisher and can also take a game away from the opposition. I've known Elizabeth for a long time and she, she brings the same energy all the time. Um, she's a jovial character that likes a little bit of a joke every now and then which keeps everyone in good spirits but at the same time she brings that little bit of aggression from a batter and bowling front which helps us as a team take a game forward which I think can be important in putting us into positions to win games that might be otherwise difficult to win. I think a lot, and I'm saying a lot, changed over the last 10 years that I've been a part of Northerns, called Titans now. Um, mainly sponsors um, that came on board for us. Um, we never really had sponsors, we just kind of had the clothes and we just were in the badge. Um, but having like a, a, a brand like Plant Fitness and Fidelity that's sponsoring us, is, it's, it's making our lives easier as sportswomen to, to be able to represent them in a way as well. So I think in the last 10 years that was the major thing for us, having sponsors um, to make us feel better about ourselves, making feel like it's a more profession going forward. I think that's the big change. We also had a, a lot of um, like changes in management um, for the better and I think um, having Byron in the, in the system now, it's just, we're just going from strength to strength. I know the results might not speak of it, but background, a lot of ladies have developed their skills um, on different occasions and different skills. So I just think a lot changed, but a lot changed for the better. I haven't been um, in one of the, the pro tier call-ups like playing for them. I've been invited to various training camps where I've I've been fortunate enough to work with obviously the country's best um, players that you've looked up when you were growing up. So um, it's a fortunate position to be in. I think a lot of youngsters still strive to go there. It was a bit un, um, of a wake-up call to me. Um, I didn't expect going to the national camps or whatever. Um, they just said, "Listen, here's your flight. Um, please be at the airport." And I, I went, um, and I was so excited to join it because I kind of felt that. This is a step in the right direction for me, having to sacrifice all of what happened, um, making sure that you keep going, keep working hard, it's kind of, kind of paying off. So that was pretty much the, the highlight so far. Just to get a call up um, to go to, to, the, to see what they're doing basically. I think our dreams, my dreams for her and her dreams herself line up pretty well because I think she has got the potential and the talent to, to play at the highest level and play for the pro tiers. So what we want to do from our side is keep working hard and keep giving her the best opportunities to showcase her ability and give her the opportunity to keep growing her game. Because as soon as we feel that she's good enough, that's when the other players are going to go even further ahead of her. So we're going to keep working hard and keep showing her the way forward and hopefully she can get there. And it will be a, a great moment for all of us the day that she does on the, the green and gold. 
it's on the cards for me to play for South Africa, definitely. Um, that's a dream ever since I was 10, 9 years old since I started playing. Um, what I need to do in terms of staying in, in the pipeline and keep putting up my hand is to make sure, first of all, fitness is a very strict thing um, for you to stay in the system. So keeping up, making sure my fitness is up to, up to scratch. Um, also just to dominate provincial level and make sure that whatever I do, I dominate the, the system basically. At such a young age, Elise Murray Marks is already a cream of the crop cricket player in South Africa and one to keep a close eye on because the only direction she is going is the top. We wish her success in all her strides. Let's take a quick break. We'll be back with more of your cricket updates. Welcome back. Now the Momentum Multiply Titans assistant coach, Jeff Toyana, gives us an update with what's been happening with the team. Yeah, December for, for us as Titans was quite disappointing because we finished, you know, like our like one day campaign, like not in a good note. Uh, yes, we were disappointed as a squad, but uh, yes, we've taken some lessons from that. And uh, yes, it's time for us to move forward. That's been tough to manage because we started as well our training and like for the guys who are not in the SA20, I think we started on the 12th of Jan. And just to bring them here, I mean, it was not easy. Because like some of them believe that like they, you know, like they are good enough to be playing in the comp, you know, and then like them watching like the competition like that they should be part of, is something like not easy to manage. But uh, like we've managed to speak to the guys, and I think it's important for them to be positive, you know, like take this snub, you know, positive, and just make sure that they keep working hard, and then come next season maybe like their turn, you, uh, you know, will come. And I think with us, out of 16 players that are contracted, I think there's only, what, three players who didn't make the cut, uh, which shows how strong, you know, the, you know, like a Titans cricket is. So far, it's been good exposure. I think the, the challenges that were sort of, I was confronted with as well, um, in my game, my mindset, my approach, I think everything was sort of challenged me to grow. Um, so I'm really happy about that. I'm looking forward to the next half of the season, moving into the four-day uh, four campaign. Um, I'm looking to really own my skills in that and looking to be impressive. The well representation of the Titans players in the SA20 is testament to the quality of players that have come out from the Titans cricket pipeline and further gone on to make a name for themselves nationally and internationally. I think it's wonderful for Cricket South Africa. Um, and look at the crowds, look at the people who are just really not cricket fans, but actually just going there just to spend their day there. Um, you go into socials, you know, you, you see SA20 everywhere, you look at billboards, SA20 everywhere. So I think it's really good for Cricket South Africa. Um, and I think it's really good for the players as well, who are very fortunate to be playing there at the moment. And I think it's going to really push their careers forward um, and really make a difference to their lives. So I'm really happy to see the players that are there. And uh, it's a whole lot of fun. I'm glad we've got some players, you know, like in the SA20. The bulk of our squad is there and guys are really, really doing well in the competition. And um, yeah, like this competition has been great. You know, like it is the next level. I mean, the, the players, like the fields, the crowds, uh, it's been quite lovely to watch. And uh, yes, I've, I've really enjoyed it as well. I will focus on the multiply, you know, the momentum multiply titans. Yes, our guys, I mean, Classy, Classy has done well in the comp. I mean, I think he's top, you know, like of the runs there. Clarkson whipping that one away. Into the crowd. You know, Eden Makram is the leader in the PE franchise. He's really, really got some runs as well. That's a fantastic shot. Whoa. Aiden Mark, get out of Yes, like Simon Hammer, like in Devon, has not got a chance really. I mean, he's played one game and then like he didn't bowl, which is something quite disappointing. And yes, if you look across the country, I mean, you know, the guys have done, you know, really well. Like Don Ferreira, like the first game for Josie, you know, Super Kings, he really, really did well. Shot, banged away. Pitches and doesn't carry on, but it's a couple more to Donovan Ferreira and he announces himself in the Betway SA 20 with a half century of 28 balls. 
Yes, Branti and Tech has not got an opportunity. Pangi, Pangi has been superb in the competition, you know. He's really, really bold, you know, like bold well. It's gone up in the air, straight up in the air. Another wicket. Pangisa with one in his first. Yeah, just looking just across the country, I mean, the, our players have really, really been superb. I mean, like Previs as well in Cape Town. Oh my goodness me, this guy is lighting this ground up tonight. The floodlights are doing a good job. He's doing a better one. What a smile, what a stroke. I think he'll be the first one to tell you that he's not been consistent enough, but he's got some good scores there for them as well. So uh, yes, our boys are doing well and uh, we're quite excited and we're happy. And it's tough to support anyone as a spectator. It's friendly and got the treatment. Yeah, this is one of the shots that he's almost perfected over his career, Quentin de Kock. I'm leaning towards, you know, Pretoria Capitals because, like, that's where the Titans are. It's a convincing win for the Pretoria Capitals here at uh, Abacha this evening. Absolutely fantastic. The big players stood up. And Paul, I mean, because all the coaches of the, um, of the Titans are there, like, at Paul. But um, yes, it's a great tournament, and I think uh, you know, yeah, like going to the end, you know, of the tournament, it will, it will quite be interesting to see who like makes the semis and then who doesn't, because it's a close competition, and everyone can beat anyone as well. But it's been great for us, you know, like like South Africa, and then yeah, coming back home, yes, we've got about six, seven players who were not picked, as well for the SA20 guys like Jevi, you know, he's been doing some work with us here. Um, GV, like Mudiri, you know, Boasty as well, you know, Musa, you know, like those, those type of guys are doing their work as well. Yeah, but because we still have not finished our season, we, we still have four more games to go, and it's a big push as well for that four day competition. Productive, it's really been productive. Um, we all know the goal at hand. Um, I think obviously we didn't come through with the 50 over campaign, so we all know the goal, goal at hand. Um, and I think really focused on ensuring that our skills are where they need to be. Uh, mentally, we've had the break, so we really have nothing to, to blame it on. Our fitness is up there, we've got the programs, everything is really looking in order um, and preparations for for day camping is looking good. So our chats have just been around um, ensuring that our well-being is um, sorted and taken care of. This competition does not only bring financial benefits for the players, but it also exposes our domestic talent to an international market. We would like to wish the Titans players in the competition the best of luck. We hope they fly the Sky Blues flag very high. We have unfortunately reached the end of our show. Make sure you stay updated by visiting our social media platforms. See you next time.